Panthers looking very focused in the second half. Maxi looking for more. He's got it! Daniel House will up a number on the lob and then flies in with the emphatic one-hand jam. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the Pick Swap Media YouTube channel. It is almost NBA draft season. The finals are winding down, and it is arguably my favorite time of year in the sports world to get into it, learn about all these prospects. My guy Ryan Coyle has already been doing an awesome job breaking stuff down. He's got a couple breakdowns already out, more coming on the way. And I'm excited today. We're going to talk about the top guys. So before we kick it off, Ryan, how are we doing? Pretty good. Uh, like you said, fun time of year. Uh, really big in the college basketball. So it's cool to see these guys at first, get the first look at them during the season. And then now I'm kind of circling back around to them and getting some closer looks and really looking looking closer at these guys and breaking them down. Like you said, we already got Derek Whitehead and Derek Lively breakdown on the channel. Uh, later this week, I'm sure we're going to have uh, Jairus Walker, Jordan Hawkins, Anthony Black, Grady Dick. So going to be trying to hit on as much guys as possible. Um, and then obviously, like today, you said, we're going to be hitting on some of these top tier guys. Yeah, and that's what I'm excited to do. Uh, there's honestly, I, I've liked this draft class. The more I dig into it, the more I like it. But I don't think these top guys should be get forgotten. So it is important to make sure that we dive in, get all those guys. So we're going to start at the top, talk some Wemby, talk some Scoot in a video after this as well. But first off, of Victor Wembanyama, the guy that has been the clear-cut number one pick for quite some time now, several years now. And some of the biggest hype that we've ever seen around a prospect, and for good reason. I honestly went in as a little bit of a Victor Wembanyama uh, skeptic and the I just can't find a reason to to buy into that that there's just too much going on so I'll start off with you what are your initial takeaways of his game do you have any concerns of how it's going to translate to the NBA or is this guy just a uh, can't miss it in in a way that hasn't been seen in years it's almost like I didn't want to like do an individual breakdown of him just because I feel like it's so hard to do just because he's so different than I think like anyone that we've seen um, it's kind of interesting though because if Amani Bates was what Amani Bates was supposed to be, the next Kevin Durant or whatever. I think that would have been awesome, like these two guys going head to head because they were really both proclaimed as next up and both supposed to be, you know, the top guys in this class. Um, but Weminyama, I, I won't say that I, I've sat and watched full games of him, but just seeing the clips, you can see that he is able to do a little bit of everything. And just like doing more research on him and, and listening to stuff, like listen to one podcast where uh, Devontae Jones, his point guard, with the Metropolitans now, he was like talking all about him and he definitely has like his head on right. He's got some shit to him too. And like, they've been prepping him for this moment his entire life, like stretching, when to eat, when to sleep, all that good stuff. Like this is a guy that has his head on straight. And as long as he's able to stay healthy, there's no reason he shouldn't be able to live up to these expectations. I think the one big thing with LeBron is he was like the biggest hyped up basketball player probably ever coming out of the draft. And I think you can say that LeBron's probably exceeded his expectations. I'm interested to see if Wembenyama can do the same thing. Yeah, it is going to be interesting. And I, I think he's right in that conversation with the greatest hype up there with LeBron. It is amazing that LeBron lived up to it. I've seen tweets with Wemby of like, if he's not Hakeem Olajuwon, it's a disappointment. And these are crazy shoes that he's being thrown into. I am happy he's going to land in San Antonio because I think that is a great organizational spot for him to, to land and grow. Uh, to rattle off a couple stats as far as Wemby, this playing against grown men as a 18, 19 year old, averaged 21.8 points per game, 10.3 rebounds, 2.4 assists. 3.1 blocks. He had a, uh, a block rate of 10%. Uh, the block, His 3.1 blocks per game is first all-time in the Pro-A League in France. The previous was uh, by Sané at 2.4 and Rudy Gobert at 1.9 are the, the two highest other than that. So he's notably above what has ever been recorded in France. Uh, he also registered a 30.7% usage rate, which is pretty insane for a guy his age and in that league, especially, I don't think you're going to find you're very few of these college guys will, will find a number anywhere near that. I mean, if that's in the NBA, that's a, a top eight number. Joel Embiid was in a 33% and he ranked second or third at the end of the year. I forget how it totaled out, but 30.7% at his age is ridiculous. If I had to put some sort of player 
comparison on it. And as you mentioned, it is hard because he is like an alien. But I would probably say like a Kevin Durant offense with a Rudy Gobert defense. And and that is the thing that stands out the most. Like that's a ridiculous combo. I think from day one, he's going to be a game changer because of the defensive side of the ball is that he is such a ridiculous wingspan, such a ridiculous shot blocker. And he's also got a little stuff to him. Like you said, like he's not afraid to take a hit. He will use his body a little. There's going to be moments where he's absolutely bullied in the NBA to start, but that happens to all these young guys coming out. And I'm confident that uh, similar to I talked about with Chet last year, and obviously we did not have a chance to see that, but I think Wemby does a very nice job of kind of taking the contact and using his wingspan to still wreak havoc and create problems with shots. So I do think defense from day one is the biggest thing that we're going to see. And yeah, I'm really confident that this guy is no doubt the number one, not that that's a hot take by any means. Yeah. And having watched Jokic throughout this playoff run, I think the Spurs might try and model their offense going forward kind of like that with the way that they've used uh, the Nuggets have used Jokic, where the ability to just grab and go for Jokic off the glass, I think, Women Yama would be awesome at that because he has shown the ability to be a good passer and he has good handles too. Like if he can just grab the rebound and, and he's a double, double type guy, he's got, you got early starts to your offensive possessions every time with him pushing up the floor. I, I think as like a initiator facilitator type guy, I think he's going to be able to do that from day one as well. Um, the overall offensive game, I'm going to be interested to see how that translates. Cause we see him throwing up these like kind of ridiculous shots at times they're going in granted, but Will that translate to the highest level of basketball? That remains to be seen. But the skill set, the the tools, everything's undeniable. Um, I am just intrigued to see how it translates and how quick it translates. Because I, I don't have doubts that his talent and his skill set won't translate. It's just, is he going to be able to do everything that he's been doing in France right away in the NBA? I think that's going to be a big test where what kind of player he's going to be from the start. But because we still have to keep in mind, he's only what, 19 years old. I mean, Mm -hmm. he's got a a lifetime ahead of him to keep keep playing and getting better. For sure. And that grab and go stuff, I think first off is going to be uh, continuing, continually evolving in the NBA. I think it's become more and more popular. That's kind of how Wemby naturally does it. And I have had a chance to watch three full games of him, two of them against Scoot, which were both a blast to watch that matchup against the G League Ignite team. And he impressed me even more than I expected going in. And obviously there was a, crazy high bar to at the start of what this guy can be and to see him really dominate a game in a way that I was kind of skeptical of like there was a part of my brain that was like is this guy just a highlights guy where he can just do those things and it looks flashy looks great he really does impact the game and play a winning brand of basketball and I think that can be further ingrained into him specifically in San Antonio I think that's a spot where they're going to uh, breed winning habits into him make sure that's the case and the defensive thing I just want to bring up once again is like from day one going to change an impact like you see the way Rudy Gobert who uh by the way has gotten whooped by Wemby one-on-one like a couple years ago and that's a funny clip that you guys should check out too uh but like Rudy Gobert is such a, a basic offensive player that there's really nothing there and he's still like a max contract guy and worth five first round picks according to Timberwolf uh Minnesota Timberwolves like that kind of game changing defense does matter and I get like in the the era where perimeter scoring is more important that it's more guard and wing dominant that is lessening to an extent but you just can't make up for when you have a big man that can anchor in the way that I believe Wemby will be care- will be able to uh he's going to be able to just change things there and and big men can just erase shots and erase others mistakes in a way that no other defender is so once again like that to me is the biggest thing and then all the other stuff is gravy to me like I, I do think the defense is dead set going to be there he's going to be capable he also can rotate onto the perimeter just fine you you have that from day one and then just put more and more on his plate offensively, you can grow him into a, a surefire Hall of Famer and an MVP level player. So uh, he's in a great spot. He's got a great starting, sp- sp- starting spot, and I'm excited to see what he turns into. Yeah, one other thing I think with him, the I want to see how he deals with the pressure at the NBA level because he's, he's now the greatest prospect since LeBron. If I can think off the top of my head, the other greatest prospect since LeBron, Zion, what the hell is going on with him? Ben Simmons, what the hell is going on with him? And no. Wiggins, I feel like, was the other one that was kind of thrown around there. And then AD, I guess, might be the uh, the next closest one. But, I mean, he's never, I think, surpassing anything that LeBron's ever accomplished. But, I mean, he certainly has lived up to the hype himself. But when, when you throw around that greatest prospect since, it's just like in football with, you know, Trevor Lawrence, the greatest quarterback prospect since Andrew Luck. Well, Andrew Luck out of the league in eight years and he was the greatest thing since uh Peyton Manning so it, it really is hard to to live up to these expectations and I would really be interested to see if we had like a panel of 10 people and we pulled them like 
what would you deem a successful career for him? Because expectations are sky high. And I think it's going to be kind of uh, not universal in terms of what, what people are really expecting from him from day one. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point. And those are really like responsibilities that are, are tough to put on, on anybody and let alone a 19 year old kid that's still figuring things out. So I'm going to pull up some highlights uh, right here next to us and we can keep talking on, on what exactly he's going to bring. But I do want to point out some of the stuff in his game. And these are just some general highlights that we will hop through here. Uh, but it is look at that length. Like you just can't teach that, that ability to, to get a rebound like that and dunk. And then this type of shot creation is just, it's just foreign for a guy that size, like to be seven foot five, which is insane is like to be able to do that and have a little bit of bag to you, even just a basic jump shot. There's very few guys that are going to even be in the vicinity of blocking it. So he's at such an advantage like that. And I mean, you see that block there, like that's the real deal defense that I'm talking about from day one that is going to make an impact regardless of what team he's on. And this, there truly is just some, some special stuff in here. Yeah. And I think a big thing with him on the defensive end is like, his reaction time and he's like agile enough where it's not like he's just some big dude with all these raw tools and stuff. He actually has the skill set and the ability to do it from day one. It's not like, Oh, we just have to, we have all this to work with. We have to tap into it. No, he's going to be able to come into the league and do this kind of stuff from day one, which mm -hmm. is pretty scary to think as a 19 year old. And you would assume only going to be getting better as he goes on. Yeah. And as far as like improvement areas that I try to label, I think the expectation is the greatest point. And I think the system that he falls in a pretty much dead set to be San Antonio is going to play a big role in how much he's asked to do from day one. I know he had his quote after the lottery that he expects to contend right away and he's looking for rings and all that, which should be his mindset for sure. But we know that's not exactly how it works. So I'm curious how he's brought along like that. But the other improvement areas, number one, is just shooting consistency. Like it's great that he can do those types of turnaround faders. That can't be your go-to shot every time. He's also punish punishing mismatches. He's not good at – that will come as he puts on muscle, puts on size. There are some times where, as I mentioned earlier on, he's going to get bodied. If he gets, gets caught in the post with a Joel Embiid or a player like that, like that, that is going to end up wrong. Nikola Jokic who's going to body him to the basket and make sure. So he's going to have his growing pains with that. Uh, he's also not a great off the dribble shooter. Uh, just this season, he shot 37 of 120. That's 30.8%. He was 32.5% off the catch and shoot, which also isn't great. So the efficiency overall is 46.7% from the field, 29.2% from three on five attempts per game. Good raw numbers there. Those will improve. Uh, his pocket can get picked a little bit off the handle. That's going to be something that I'm interested to see how the, how teams defend him. Uh, because like, we see, I mean, obviously he's seven foot five. You're going to need a massive frame, but I'm curious if there's, uh, if he does become the grab and go guy, if teams try and scheme with like bringing a guard to just like pound him and harass him. And I could see that seeing some success. So it, this is a different flavor of player than we've ever seen. I'm curious what the, uh, tactical moves to adjust to it are. I also think when you're bringing up his numbers, like percentage wise, I think, with this team in France, they know what he is. And I feel like have just given him such a long leash where he can go out there and kind of play around and yeah, show off this talent and show off these skills because they're still winning and they're still having a very successful season over there. So in terms of that, it's not like I feel like he's been given his long leash to go around and toy around and figure out kind of what can work for you and what more freakish stuff are you able to do. Um, I think they might try to hone that in a little bit more once he you know officially gets into the NBA. Uh, we won't see as crazy shots, but if he's able to prove that he can make those, you know, step back fadeaways, those three point one legged shots that we've seen him take before as well. If he shows the ability to do it efficiently, he's still going to have the chance, I think, to do it. But I think they're going to try and hone him in and make him, you know, as simple as a player as first as he gets acclimated to the NBA um, and just let that raw ability take over as he continues to develop his game and his body. Yeah, and a lot of this is still nitpicking for sure. I mean, this is a guy who, across the pro A in, fan, in France, he led the league in points, rebounds, and blocks while his team was tied for the second best uh, record. So a guy that it did convert to team success, he did produce to the highest level, and it really just does blow my mind. Finished 73.1% uh, at the rim, which is super impressive, and I think that should prove those wrong that are concerned about his size that he's just big enough and long enough to, to overcome that that he can take a body he does have some touch he does have some finishing ability and that is just the the craziest thing is it feels like he has a a shooter's touch at seven foot five like he's not a big man that can shoot he's a seven foot five shooter is how i feel about Wemby, and and i do think there's a difference there and you can just see it in the way that it comes off his hand that he has the touch and 
I mean, some of these highlights, like they look like a straight up like NBA my player that you made. It, it is unbelievable that he can even just do these things. Yeah, I'm also very intrigued to see what that the players in the NBA actually like think of him. Like, do they believe this hype? Do they think that he's going to be able to be the next great player in the league that he's being brought up to be? Um, Cause as we've talked about with his weight, people are going to, I think at first at least be able to try and push him around, um, see if they succeed in that regard. But also like, you know, NBA players, they have their egos, they have their attitudes and they're, this dude hasn't played a second in the league yet. And he's already being, talked about as the, the next great one. Like people are going to take that personally, I think, and try and shut him down. Um, like I would pay good money to get like a full, like mic'd up of his first like NBA action from the yeah. opposing coach to like the opposing team. Just like, what the fuck is this guy after he makes some like yeah. crazy ass plays? Or if they're like, this dude's soft, like we, we got him. Like it, I'd be interested to see kind of w- what the league's going to think and make of him. Mm -hmm. And he is going to come in with a bit of a a target on his back because of the hype around him, because of the buzz. And uh, that's hard on everybody. It's hard on Wemby to live up to him. It's hard on uh, the guys that are clearly circling him. Every NBA player has that competitive drive that not every, but uh, most NBA players have that. Like, I want to be the greatest out there. I want to prove that. And he's going to be a guy who has a target on his back trying to prove that wrong. I know you brought up a couple of the one picks and the hyped up prospects. Beyond that, is there any stylistically players that you would kind of have a comp? I know he's pretty unique to anything we've seen but is there anybody else that jumps to mind so many different crosses of players like you can say kd with some of his ability you can see some some Giannis just with his foreign s whatever and just crazy uh frame and then you see the gobert on defense like I, i really don't think that you can make a comparison for him i saw one the other day and i forgot i forget who it was but i was like the name escapes me right now, but I was like, if he winds up being that, that's a disappointment. Like, mm-hmm. it was like a dude who might have been like a fringe all star was like his projection. Okay. Yeah. So you, you touched on that earlier. Like, what is a successful career? What would you put as a successful career for Victor Wembanyama? Because these are sky high expectations from day one. I mean, I'd have to say at least double digit all stars. Um, it also really depends on his health. Like, is he a yeah. guy that, you know, plays 12 years in the league and just because he, he breaks down and has some injuries, I would say that would have to be like seven, eight all-stars or probably a ring or two. Um, anything less, I think, than double-digit all-stars if he has like a full, just say 15-year career, double-digit all-stars and two championships, I, I would probably put at the kind of the baseline for him. I, I mean, this is – it's pretty crazy to say that for a guy that's ever played, but I mean – when yeah. you're being talked about like he is and you see these clips and the talent he has, uh, I, I feel like the pressure does have to be on him. So uh, yeah. I, I'm interested to hear what you have to say about that as well. Yeah, I think that's fair. I'm in a similar mindset. I, 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 It's crazy to say that if he's not a Hall of Famer, I think he's probably a disappointment. But that's probably where the stakes are for him. And I think like the worst case scenario for Wimanyama is he's still a very effective player. I think there is definitely a world where he's not like the number one guy on a team offensively for sure. I think his greatest impact may be as like a rim protector, a guy that can do other things, be a secondary scorer. I'm not sure if I'm sold on him being like the the engine of an offense from a long term standpoint, but it's that's just the nature of the NBA. Is that's very hard to do from a big man perspective. Uh, we've seen the struggles of Joel Embiid with it. We've seen the Nuggets combat that by their unique system and the way they're utilizing Jokic. So I don't know if I'm sold on him being like a, a number one scorer on a team on an every night basis. But that doesn't mean he's not the best player, and that is the expectations that he is still making more of an impact on that. So, yeah, I guess I am saying a Hall of Famer close to a 10 time all star and all those things like a borderline MVP player is what I want to see. I would like to see him win at least one defensive player of the year. He absolutely has that potential, probably multiple. If he commits to that side of the floor, he absolutely can rake up those awards and and he has all the talent to do so from day one. So um, I would probably put it at that. And yeah, th- those are that's a crazy bar to live up to for sure. Yeah, as long as long as he stays healthy, and I feel like that's going to be said a lot from not just us, but from everyone talking about him, he should be a guy that makes up over a hundred million dollars in the NBA just based off his defensive ability alone. Yeah, and just based off that, what we've been talking about with him, and if he can be like a twelve to fourteen point per game type guy or something, and like a second or very good third option on a team, he'll easily clear a hundred million dollars. And as we continue to see the thing go up, but uh, I think health is the biggest roadblock in his way because yeah. he will put on muscle. He will put on 
uh, extra juice to his frame. It, it just, I think it's all going to come down to health at the end of the day. And like you're saying, does his complete offensive package translate to being a number one guy? That That's going to be something we got to see as well. But I, I'm also curious, one last thing, how much longer does Greg Popovich coach? Because he's Good 72 question. years old now. I mean, obviously he gets his hands on this guy. I feel like he's going to try and stay around for at least another five years. But Pop's been doing it forever, and he's always, like, outspoken about having – everything's not all about basketball. He's a big, like, outside-of-sports type guy, it seems like. So does he really want to spend his, you know, remaining years still coaching after doing it for so long in such a long time? And then if he does eventually leave, what happens then with the Spurs? Do they keep it in the family? I think – NBA fit is always a big deal. Uh, no player, no coach. I think you'd rather have get your hands on a high level talented big man like Wembenyama than Craig Popovich. But I'm interested interested to see what happens with his development if Pop does leave um, after like three or four seasons. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And frankly, I expected Popovich to step down when hit this last dynasty kind of was put to an end and when they slid into the the bad team. I do think there's a side of him that is going to enjoy uh, taking a team from zero to the top and, and starting to build with the young core. I do think he enjoyed coaching this team. And it was cool to watch the Spurs. Like, you compare them to, like, the Rockets. The Rockets were basically out there, like, freestyling and doing whatever this whole season. The Spurs still ran, like, legitimate offenses. They ran plays. They had structure. And that does matter in the long run. So I do think that they are doing the right steps now. This is a guy that he will uh, love to coach for sure. And not to bring up, like, some bad stuff too, but, like, Popovich's wife has passed away. I do think basketball is, like, his passion commitment clearly and, and something that he's not in a rush to give up uh he's a guy that i could see like coaching till the last day if he if he cares about it that much so yeah that is an interesting topic but i think that is going to wrap us up for victor Wembanyama. appreciate you guys for tuning in make sure to drop a like and subscribe on this we will have one out with scoot henderson dropping uh coming up next uh so make sure to check that out as well we'll talk next time